We're currently right above the Rising Star cave system, uh, outside in the cradle of humankind where Homo naledi was discovered. We have a unique situation where it's very difficult to get into the cave, it's very difficult to navigate through the cave system, and it's also very difficult to get down to the Dinaledi chamber. One has to pass through um, an 18 centimeter gap inside the 12 meter chute uh, that leads to the chamber, and of course that restricts a lot of things. Uh, that restricts both the amount of people, the kind of people, as well as the kind of technology that you can take down inside to the, in, the, in the chamber. And we couldn't use the traditional methods of excavation. <laughs> He's done it. The man is, is hopelessly insane. Um, we had a 3D scanner down there with the excavators. They would scan the excavation area before removing any of the fossil material as well as afterwards. And they could send that data back up to the top where people like Professor Lee Berger were able to look at the data, interpret it, and perhaps give some sort of direction to the excavators on how to proceed. Traditional excavations are often dealing with a much larger area. I mean, sometimes in the range of kilometers when you're talking about paleoanthropology. But we were dealing with a very, very concentrated space. I mean, the excavation unit that we were working in is literally 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters by less than 20 centimeters deep. And from that small space, we got out these 1,500 bone fragments. So the, the density of material was really crazy. And the three-dimensional hand scanning actually helped us resolve that in a way that we probably couldn't have in the same amount of time had we been trying to draw maps every time. And, trying to plot each one of those pieces onto a, a grid. So that was really helpful. And then just tying that excavation unit and the chamber itself into the larger system of the cave with good precision is also extremely important because we want to try and get a broader view of the cave and its context. For those of us who weren't underground at that time, it was really a way to share in the excitement because we had these 3D models right in front of us and it was almost as if we were looking at the same thing that the excavators were looking at. Uh, we used a lot of technology, a lot of high resolution imaging. Um, and what we first did was we took a, a drone, we flew a, a UAV drone above the land, uh, which I'm standing on now. Uh, and that had a camera attached to it and we took many high resolution photos of the ground above the cave system. Uh, we used those photos and we applied a method of photogrammetry to create a 3D model of the ground above the cave system. We then uh, took a laser scanner and scanned the entrance of the cave system as well as the cave system all the way to the chute. And we linked the UAV photogrammetry, which is above ground, to the laser scanning. And then inside the actual dinner lady chamber, we have uh, a very nice handheld 3D scanner that we used uh, which scanned the actual excavations and we linked those scans to the laser scans and to the UAV photogrammetry. So we could get a whole complete model of the entire process as well as the cave system. It's, it's been a real challenge. I mean, I think it's an awesome way to test new technologies and new equipment for us and then also a really good way to see how we can use these technologies in a really innovative way to, to help us understand the, the context of the caves.